My name is Dan Fisher and I teach junior high English and history here at Foothill School. Seminar, the way it works is I choose a challenging text for the students and they read a prescribed amount before the class and everyone has to come with one or two thought-provoking questions about the reading. And then I read one or two passages from the book and then I pose my question. I feel like we discover much more in seminar than when you're actually reading. We sometimes even go to depths that after you look back at them seem kind of ridiculous. We kind of pick apart every single aspect and every single metaphoric context like that you could possibly imagine and it's just I don't know, it's really, it's really helpful. It makes you think about it at a whole different level. It's a dialogue where together they're trying to come to a deeper understanding of the book, and I want them speaking with each other, and I'm just a member at the table who will sometimes interject to keep it rolling. It's, it's a process that I really enjoy. It's my favorite thing. I'm so glad I can do seminar here. And the students really feel respected while doing seminar. And I think the combination of the respect some of the humor and the camaraderie in the process. It's really great. In seminar, you're, just, you're learning to converse with your peers in a respectful manner instead of just saying, no, you're wrong, I'm, I'm going next. It's just uh, gently introducing yourself into the conversation. I really love when they respond to each other, though, because I feel like that's really rare mm -hmm. in education. I can sometimes go for 15 or 20 minutes and maybe not even have to say anything because the kids are engaged in what's happening. When you set high expectations, kids feel excited by that, and they really reach for it, and they're really capable. They realize that, hey, I have something to say, and it matters, about important things, not just cheesy things like, what does the red ribbon symbolize in chapter four? Um, I don't like approaching literature with an answer key. I just feel like that's, that's lying to children, because you're, you're pretending like you're wondering about a book when actually you already know the answer as a teacher and you're trying to guide them to that. I just don't think that's real education and real exploration. So I spent a lot of time thinking about the students and what books I choose. It's, I actually really enjoy that. I probably spend hours over the summer um, making book lists, thinking what would be the best way to set up the books for the class. We've done Brothers Karamazov, 1984 and Brave New World in junior high. For younger readers, we might do something like Ender's Game or The Book Thief, books that are pretty easy to read, but still have interesting, discussable content. I had one student approach me and said, I really want to read War and Peace. And I said, well, that's, you know, that's pretty over the top. That's like 1,400 pages and a really challenging book. And she said, I really want to do it, Dan. So I said, well, if you can recruit two other students, I'll let a three-person seminar run. And they did a three-month seminar on War and Peace and her group of three rated it as an 8 out of 10, a 9 out of 10, and a 10 out of 10 for enjoyment of War and Peace by Tolstoy. And it was really satisfying, and she felt really respected, and the kids felt proud of themselves. The alumni, they talk about what they remember and what they miss, and almost all of them have said seminar. These are kids that are taking honors classes at Boise High, and they still said, we'd still like to engage in seminar. So, um, we just kind of formed a Facebook page for alumni seminar. They don't get credit for it and there's no money exchange involved. It's all just for the, the, the joy of learning. The fact that this place even exists really blew my mind. I didn't really think many schools would do this because education is so controlled now and regimentized and data driven that things like seminar really, you know, it's hard to measure. But one thing the students do is after they read these books, they write papers on the books. And the papers they write are pursuing their own questions. Student voices matter here. You know, when, it, when the classroom becomes more about what the students are thinking and questioning and want to talk about, I think that's much more powerful than just an agenda.